de vous. Yes, you are. Yes, you are the Lord. Yes, you are. Hosanna, blessed be the Lord, let the rock of my salvation be exalted. Hosanna, blessed be the Lord. Let the rock of my salvation be as all. Singing Hosanna, Hosanna. Let the rock of my salvation be as all. Hosanna, Hosanna. your voice and just worship the almighty God that can do all things. The King of kings, the Lord of lords, the omnipotent, the omnipresent, the science God, the unchangeable changer. Lift up your voice and give him more glory, all honor, all adoration. Let's lift up our voice and just appreciate the almighty God. Oh, my riba to Gazin, Mama, can you thank God for preserving you, for protecting you, for caring for you, for defending you, for fighting your battle till this moment? Lift up your voices and appreciate it. Oh, my riba to Gazin, Mama, Zebrunduka Gabali Maka Santali. Oh, my riba Baka Shentelele, my riba to Gazin, Taliande. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' most wonderful name, we have worship. I thought somebody would say a better amen. Yeah. Can you lift up your two hands to heaven? You want to take some few prayer points before we go into the world. Beloved, gradually, gradually, we are coming to the end of the year. I am praying for somebody under the influence of my voice. Whatever evil remaining in this year will never come near you. It's a known fact that whenever the year is coming to an end, all kinds of tragedies, all kinds of destruction, all kinds of evil take place. I stand here upon this altar and I decree, as for you and your household, no evil will befall you. And that's why I want you to lift up your two hands as you lift up your voice and say, Father, you are my defense and you are my defender. Oh God of heaven, between now and the new year, as for me and my household, let us know no evil. Can you go ahead and touch the Almighty God? Can you lift up your voice and touch the Almighty God? Pray against tragedies, pray against calamities, pray against all manners of evil that as for you and your household, no, we come near you. No plague or the wicked, we come near you. In the mighty name of Jesus, ask for God's protection, God's preservation, journey mercy as you go to and fro. Lift up your voice, touch to the Almighty God. And Riba Baka Saka told you, Mama, Lim Brande Kaka Baba 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 Baba. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' most wonderful name, we have prayed. The Bible says, Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. Lift up your two hands to heaven and say, Father, you can do better. Say, Father, in this month of visitation, oh God, my Father. Visit me and let me end this year better. 
let me end this year better than I started. Can you go ahead and talk to the Almighty God? Ask for God's visitation. Ask for divine visitation that you end this year better than you started. It doesn't matter how good you started. Surely you will end better. It doesn't matter how bad you started. Surely you will end better. Lift up your voice and cry to God for a visitation. A visitation that will cause you to end this year better than you started. In your business, in your finances, concerning your children, concerning your spouse. Let the Almighty God visit you and cause you to end the year better than you started. Is somebody praying at all? Is somebody praying at all? Man, riba tega libra gasantalia, brugodoboska leba sinta limama. In Jesus' most wonderful name, we have prayed. Finally, lift up your two hands and take the third prayer point. And I want you to pray with all your heart and with all your strength. And say, Father, you can do better. Say, Father, every blessing meant for me for this year. Oh God, my Father. Let there be a visitation and let them be delivered to me. Go ahead and talk to the Almighty God. There are blessings meant for you for this year. I the Lord to visit you and deliver them to you. Ask for divine visitation that will deliver your blessings for this year. That you will not experience carryover. Masika la braka toba shantali mama. Ah, my Rebaba Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Beloved brethren, the month of November is the only month that starts with no. I stand here today. In this month of November, I decree in that name that is above every other name. No weeping in your life in the name of Jesus. No sorrow in the life in your life in the name of Jesus. You shall not mourn in the name of Jesus. Whatever evil remaining this year, because you are standing here this morning, let the Almighty God by His power take far away from you, take far away from your family in the mighty name of Jesus. No one will pay you a condolence visit. Ah, ah, this year is going to an end. No one will pay you a condolence visit. They will not open a condolence register in your family. In the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever you need to have to end this year better, let God visit you and deliver in the name of Jesus. Every blessing God has prepared for this year that you are yet to receive, let him visit you and deliver to you in the name of Jesus. Your coming here this morning will not be in vain. May the Lord hear your cry. May the word of God make impact in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. Blessed be the name of higher. For we pray in Jesus' name. And the blood of God say a better and a louder. Let me say three powerful times. I want to go. Two and uh, Put those hands together for the Almighty God and let us please be seated in His presence. We are almost welcome in Jesus' name. The Lord will visit you afresh. If you are saying Amen, say loud and clear. By the special grace of God, our good morning, Holy Spirit, continue tomorrow morning with anointing service. And we encourage you to come with your own oil. And the theme for tomorrow is Let the fire burn. Praise the Lord. Until your fire burn, your enemy cannot become a stubble to you. And that's why if you read Obadiah 1, 17 and 18 by verse 18, he says, the house of Jesus shall be flame of fire and the house of Esau shall be stubble. Praise the Lord. I am praying for somebody as the year is going to end, your own fire will burn. As the fire burn, the glory will be retained. But as soon as the fire goes off, the glory depart. I am praying for you. The glory of God will not depart from you. So let's do it tomorrow morning and the Almighty God will help us in Jesus' name. Uh, let us not forget that the Congress is at the corner. The siege is over. Starting from 6th to uh, uh, 10th, I guess. Is it 10th or 11th? Nobody can help me. Praise the Lord of December. Let's prepare and the Almighty God 
will cause every siege in our life to be over. And something special is happening this weekend. This weekend is going to be a family weekend. Praise the Lord. At the cost of the service, you'll be intimated the uh, total package for the weekend. And the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. I discovered in my Bible a prayer of a child of God. A prayer of a servant of God. Two of them actually prayed, but I'll look at the version of the first one in the first service. Maybe by second and third service, we'll look at the second version. And the prayer the fellow prayed is, remember me and visit me. Who want to pray that prayer this morning? Can you echo it loud and clear? I can't hear you loud and clear. I've never want to be remembered that you are here this morning in that name that is above every other name. The Lord will remember you. He will not only remember you, he will remember you and visit you. Because the one that prayed that prayer, God actually answered. It is your turn, sir. It is your time and it is your turn. You didn't hear me. I say it is your time and it is your turn. Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 15 to 21 Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 15 to 21 I want us to read verse 15 together then I will read the rest of the Bible passage. Shall we stand? Shall we stand? And let's read it together. Praise the Lord. Jeremiah chapter 15. Have you opened your Bible to Jeremiah chapter 15? We all read verse 15 together then I will read the rest to verse 21. Want to go? Oh Lord, thou knowest. Remember me and do what? I can't hear you loud and clear. Let's start all over again. Want to go? Oh Lord, thou knowest. Remember me and do what? And do what? Of my persecutors. Take me not away in thy long suffering. Know that for thy sake I have suffered. Reboot. Praise the Lord. You can please be seated. Then I read the rest. Thy words were found, and I did eat them, and thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart, for I am called by thy name. Praise the Lord. O Lord God of hosts. I sat not in the assembly of the mockers, nor rejoiced. I sat alone because of thy hand, for thou hast filled me with indignation. Why is my pain perpetual? God will remember somebody today. Say, why is my pain perpetual? And my wound incurable, which refused to be healed, Will thou be altogether unto me as a liar? God can never be a liar. And that's why I know you'll be visited. Amen. Praise the Lord. And as water that fail, therefore, thou said the Lord, if thou return, then will I bring thee again, and thou shalt stand before me. And if thou take forth the pressure from the vine, thou shalt be as my mouth. Let them return unto thee. But return not thou unto them. And I will make thee unto these people a fence brazen wall. And they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee to save thee and to deliver thee. See the Lord. I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked. And I will redeem thee out of the hand of the child. Put your hand together for the almighty God. <laughs> Beloved, the prayer of Jeremiah is prayer that many people are praying. Some silently, some secretly, some openly. But one thing I know, the God that answered Jeremiah 
we answer you. When we make a man cry to God, remember me and visit me. Praise the Lord. From the Bible passage we read, we discover that things were not pleasant with Jeremiah. We discover that things were not according to his expectation. We discover that a lot of things were wrong in his life. And so he prayed a prayer. Remember me and visit me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What are the things? that made him to cry to God remember me and visit me what are the things what were the things that was happening to him number one Jeremiah was in perpetual pain he was in what do you know what it means to be in perpetual pain I stand upon this altar I don't know the burden in your heart. I don't know the pain you have been going through from January till now. God Almighty will remember and visit you. Yeah. Brethren, except you ask questions, there are many, even among your neighbors, sitting beside you that are going through pains. And the pains have become perpetual. Some are even tending toward depression. Some have caused many to disconnect. They no longer socialize. But I'm praying for you. God Almighty will visit you. Yeah. If you read that verse 18 of our text, he say, Why is my pain perpetual? And my wound incurable? Anyone having this kind of experience needs a visitation. Are you here? Your heart is wounded. Emotionally, you are wounded. Friends have wounded you. Family members have wounded you. Colleagues in the office have wounded you. You have been jilted in relationship and it has become a Curable, the pain is always there. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And the psalmist described that in Psalm 42, verse 3. Psalm 42, verse 3. What Jeremiah called a perpetual pain and a curable wound. Look at what David called it in Psalm 42, verse 3. He says, My tears have been my meat. How? Day and night. Why they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? There are people seated here today that their situations are similar. I have good news for you. I say, I have good news for you. The Lord will remember you and visit you. If you are saying amen, say it loud and clear. Then we also describe that similar situation. In Psalm 6, verse 6 to 7. Psalm 6, verse 6 to 7. He said, I am weary with my groaning all the night. Make I my bed to swim. Praise the Lord. I water my coats with my tears. He said, my eyes is consumed because of grief. It was said old because of my enemy. Praise the Lord. Good news. I say good news. I say good news. If this describe your situation this morning, I have good news for you. In this month of visitation, God will remember and visit you. If you are saying them, I say it loud and clear. Jeremiah looked at his situation. He looked at his pain. He looked at his emotional trauma. He looked at the challenges. 
He looked at his predicament. He looked at all that were wrong in his life. He said, oh Lord, remember me and what? And visit me. Why will Jeremiah pray that prayer? Oh Lord, remember me and visit me. Praise the Lord. He said he has suffered. Number two, he had what? Suffered because of what? The name of the Lord. Do you know there are brethren like this? They have asked you, like a sister was sharing with me. She said, I have stopped going to the village. I have stopped doing what? He said, because when I get to the village, my auntie will call me and call one small girl and say to me, do you know this girl? Praise the Lord. That your cousin, the junior sister. Praise the Lord. What are they trying to say? Huh? Say, your cousin, the junior. This is the daughter. What are they trying to say? That you are long overdue. I am praying for you, sir. In that name that is above every other name. Brother, this is a prophetic service. I stand at the servant of the most high God. The prayer Jeremiah prayed, the Lord will remember you and visit you. If you are saying amen, say loud and clear. That's why I said, I want you to avenge me of my persecutors. I want you to avenge me of my persecutors. Why? With Jeremiah prayed, Lord, remember me and visit me. This one is interesting. I will just give only this point, then I proceed to other things. He said something. Perhaps you may not have paid attention. He said he had found the word of the Lord. <laughs> he had done what? I have found the word of the Lord. He says he ate the word, and the word was unto him joy and rejoicing to his heart. Brethren, I want to encourage you this morning that just like Jeremiah, you need to bury your head in the word of God. You need to discover the word of God for your situation. You need to know that God has said to concerning your life. There is no pain there is no situation, there is no challenges that you are passing through that God have not settled. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I asked myself, why would Jeremiah said, I have found the word. I have eaten the word. I have done what? Eating the word. You see, it was joy and rejoicing to my heart. What would he have discovered? I discovered number one in Isaiah 49 verse 15 to 16 for somebody whose case is similar to Jeremiah the Bible says can a woman forget her sucking child that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb yea they may forget yet will I not forget thee listen to me, when you are passing through and you discover the word of God that says that God will not forget you, sir, what happened to your heart, joy come rejoicing come, can I pray for you sir, no matter your situation, God will remember you if you are saying that, say loud and clear Jeremiah discovered in Genesis chapter 8 verse 1 that God remember Noah and every living thing and all cattle that was with him in the earth and God made the wind to pass over the earth and the water assuaged. When Jeremiah discovered the world that there was wars upon the time God actually remembered Noah he came before God and said Lord 
remember me and do what? Visit me. Sir, have you discovered the word for your situation? Have you discovered the word for your condition? Because Jeremiah discovered in Psalm 105 verse 8, Psalm 105 verse 8, the Bible says, he had remembered his covenant forever. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations, the word of God does not die. Tell your neighbor, the word of God does not die. I said, tell your neighbor, the word of God do, 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 cannot die or will not die. He also discovered that the day came in Genesis 21 verse 1. The Bible says, and the law visited Sarah. And the law did what? Huh? Huh? Whose tongue will the visitation be? The law will also visit you. So, see, sir. The Bible says you will know the truth. The truth will set you free. That's why I encourage you, sir. When you are discouraged, when your spirit is down, take the word of God. Study the word of God. Read the word of God. Search the scripture. It was what Jeremiah discovered that he said to himself, remember me and do all visit me. He discovered that God can actually remember a man. He declared that God can actually visit a man. And so he went before God and said, Lord, remember me and do what? And visit me. And I know for somebody that will pray that prayer today, the Lord will remember you and visit you. I thought somebody would say a better amen. amen. What happened when the Lord remember and visit you? What happened? What will be your expectation? When you are saying, Lord, remember me and visit me. Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 20 give all the answer. Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 20 when God remember you and visit you what should you be expecting? He said and I will make thee unto these people a fence brazen wall. Praise the Lord. And they shall fight against thee. But they shall not do all prevail against thee. For I am with thee. To do what? To save thee and to deliver thee. See it who? The Lord. What is the implication of that? Implication number one. When the Lord answer you and visit you, he will fortify you. He will do what? He said, I will make you what? A prison war. Meaning that he is going to fortify you. I am praying for somebody here today. The almighty God will fortify you. That is why he said he will build a wall of fire around Jerusalem. Can I pray for only one person? The head of God around you will never be broken. If you are saying amen, say it loud and clear. And he went for that to say, and they shall fight thee and will not prevail against thee. What is God saying? Number two, when God visits you, he makes you indomitable. He makes you how? There's somebody here, all those that be fighting your destiny tooth and nail, in that name that is above every other name, you will see their end. I say you will see their end. You will be undefeatable. If you are saying them and say loud and clear. Number three, when the Lord remember you and visit you, your victory is guaranteed. Your victory is what? Can I pray for only one person? Not everybody, only one person. I stand upon this altar and I pray for you this morning. For every battle the enemy have engaged you, heaven will raise your hand as the champion. I say heaven will raise your hand as the champion. Let them gather together. The Bible says surely they will gather. He said, because their gathering is not of the Lord. He said, as many that gather for your sake, shall, do all, shall fall for your sake. And that's why I know you will see the end of your enemy. I say, you will see the end of your enemy. The Lord will remember you and visit you. That was the assurance that Joseph gave to the children of Israel in Genesis chapter 50, verse 24. He said to them, he said, listen, 
Things will change after I must have died. But no of a shorty. God will surely do what? Visit you. And you know the rest of the story. When you read Ezra chapter 12, God actually came visiting. And when God came visiting, God fought their battle. God gave them victory over Pharaoh, over his army, over his chariot. I am praying for you. Every Pharaoh will be defeated for your sake. Every Goliath will be defeated for your sake. Every Nebuchadnezzar will be defeated for your sake. Every lion will be defeated for your sake. All those that have gathered against you, they shall be defeated. If you are saying amen, say it loud and clear. Number four, when the Lord remember and visit you, he said he will save you and deliver you. From where? He said he will deliver you from the hand of the wicked and from the hand of the terrible. Brethren, either you like it or not, that's why I'm praying for you that God will grant you divine assistance. There are certain battles you cannot win on your own. And that's why you need visitation. When God comes visiting, he takes up the battle. He delivers you from the wicked. He delivers you from the terrible. And now I'm praying for you, you will be delivered. And of course, when the Lord remember and visits you, you enjoy divine presence. You enjoy what? Can I pray for you? As you go into the new year, God's presence will never depart from you. But what can I do for the Lord to remember and visit me? Hello? And that tells us straight away that there is need for every one of us to examine our life. Those perpetual pain that you are having, those challenges that, that had come upon you, those enemies that have been prevailing over your life, don't you think something is wrong somewhere? I bet you something must have gone wrong somewhere. And that's why when Jeremiah prayed the prayer, God gave him a condition. You want me to remember you and visit you? There are things you are to do. How many of us are ready to do them? Are you sure? I was talking to somebody over during the week. The fellow had been coming to me repeatedly for one thing or the other. And I said to him, I said, sir, don't you think you need to do something? Don't you think you are far from God? He said, Pastor, what do you mean? I said, ha. I said, sir, you are far from God. He said, how can you be telling me I'm far from God? I said, sir, you are far from God. And he began to look at me. I said, sir, what are you doing? to serve God. And the fellow broke to tears. Unknown to me, he was even an ordained minister in the church. Ordained what? And the parish he's attending, he's there as ordinary member. What happened? Something went wrong somewhere. Look at what God said to Jeremiah. Jeremiah 15, 18. So that before you blame God for your situation, before you give God ultimatum for your situation, check your life. Jeremiah 15, 19. He said, Therefore, thus said the Lord, if thou return, <laughs> if thou what? Eh? And you give me Revelation chapter 2 verse 4. Revelation chapter 2 verse 4. He said, nevertheless, I have some war against thee because thou hast done what? Let thy first love. Verse 5. Remember therefore for when thou art fallen and do what? And repent. And do the first work, or else let me not read it. Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. Return back to God. Do what? 
return back to God. God said to Jeremiah, return, return. Tell them to return. Number two, abide in the law. He says, stand before me. Be a man of his presence. Change your prayer gear. I told them at the good morning Holy Spirit. I said, listen, there is nothing like I have prayed. No, sir. If you have prayed, nothing happened. That is the reason why you should pray the more. Don't resign in prayers because your prayer will not be answered. That's why when God said to Jeremiah, return, he said, stand before me. God is looking for those that will stand before him. Daniel stood before God. Even after he had prayed, God had answered, but the answer was delayed. He remained standing until the angel came and now disclosed to him that actually it was from the fourth day that God had answered. But he was withstood by the priest of Pasha until angel Michael came. Let me give you one more. And then I, I close. Do you know what God means? By telling Jeremiah, thou take forth the precious from the vine. Thou take up the precious from the vine. Brethren, there are souls there that are precious for God that God is waiting for you to go and bring him. You may not believe what I'm telling you. You may ignore it. You may say, what is pastor talking about? Sir, ma, you want God to remember you and visit you? Go in search of sinners and bring them to the kingdom. Give yourself a weak project or so winning. For whatever pain you are passing through, for whatever discouragement, for whatever that is happening to you, just take a decision here today that I want to go out and bring soul to the kingdom just for one week every day and see what will happen. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. I will share this testimony with you as I close. <laughs> we are in Abara and I was pastoring Badagri. And we are crying to God to take us out of obscurity. Out of where? Obscurity. And my wife was working in Alausa, Lagos State Environmental Protection Agency as at that time. And God said to her, leave Badagri, go to first stack at Goju Market and be doing evangelism. Hello? And we'll bring you out. Hello? We have not been transferred to first stack. We are not even in satellite. We were in Badagri. God said, go to first stack. I go to market and be doing evangelism. I don't think she did the evangelism all to three months. They catapulted us from there to satellite. One year after, we enter first stack. Year after year, you are here. I know you. You know me. Put your hand together for Jesus. <laughs> Brethren, I want to let you know that God can visit you. I don't know what you are praying. It can be your career. It can be your business. God can remember you and visit you. But you need to return. All eyes closed. I don't know who God has spoken to this morning. It's not about that I am a church member. It's not even that I am a worker. You know what it is to be your relationship with God. But now you have gone far and you want to return. It's not compulsory. I'm only obeying God. You want to return back to God. Or you are standing there, you are not even yet a child of God. And you have heard the word of God. You want him to remember you and visit you. You want to surrender to him. You are the only one to lift up your right hand and I pray with you. God bless you, sir. God bless you, my brother. God bless you, my sister. If you are raising that hand, can you raise it above your head? You want to return back to God. You know yourself very well. 
There's no point pretending. You can only deceive yourself. You cannot deceive God. Is anybody like that this morning? Is any other person? As I begin to pray, if you are raising your hand, can you come to the altar? Ushers, help me. Is there any other person? Is there any other person? God bless you, sir. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I expect more people to return back to God. Come back to Him. Come back to Him. Come back to Him. That's why we stand that Him. When Jesus comes into your heart, things will change. When He comes into your situation, things will change. Why don't you come to him now so that things can change? Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Precious Father, I want to thank you for your children standing at your altar. Lord, you know their situation, you know their pain, you know their sorrow, you know their wounded spirit and wounded heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, they have returned to you today. Lord, return back and visit them in the of Jesus. Between now and Sunday, Lord, give this your children a testimony that they will never forget in the of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father, for we pray in Jesus' name. Beloved, kindly follow that, my sister, one minute, and then you will join us back. Just of all, can you just lift up your two hands? I don't have time, but I only want you to pray a prayer. And what is that prayer? Remember me and do all and visit me. I am ready to return. That's what you will add. Can you lift up your two hands? That's the only prayer you want to pray and say, Father! Can you not allow your neighbor's voice to override you? Say, Father! Remember me today and visit me now. I am ready to return. Can you go ahead and touch the Almighty God? He said to Jeremiah to return. Cry to him this morning. Masupale basuntalia. Rebole brande kasintale. Kaligade kasunta balamashe talia. Bruno gazika la brande kasantale mama. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus, mighty name, we have prayed. In that name that is above every other name. May the Lord hear your voice. Remember you and visit you. And change your situation. Even as you return back to him fully. In the name of God the Father. God the Son. God the Holy Spirit. Can you say that? Amen. Three powerful times. I want to go. Yeah.